I said it at the end of the last video, this is the one we all hate. I wonder what it is, artist statements or the business? Find out when we come back. You know, I had a hard time choosing what the one topic is that we all hate. Is it the artist statement or is it the business? You know, I'm really mixed on that. I think it's almost 50-50 over which one we hate more. You know, we shouldn't hate either of them. What I'm going to do just for keeping it fluid is I'm going with the artist statement because everything we've discussed up till now feeds to that. Going to the business is actually going to be kind of a break from how we have been learning and what we can do with what we've learned. So here we go, it's the artist statement. So now that you have, you know your work and it's in a series, um, you've broken that down, you've faced your fears so you can confidently put things in writing, and you've, you've you know, gone out and got involved and you have a little bit more of a following, there's gonna come a point where you need an artist statement, even if it's on your website. I'm going to tell you my, my couple of rules of thumb. I believe every series should have an artist statement. And in some cases, individual pieces of artwork even. Um, think about a juried show where you only get to enter one. In particular, that might need an individual statement. I am not a fan of um, the artist statement covers all artwork. I'm not a fan of that. It's kind of like you know, sending in the wrong photos to the wrong um, contest. It just doesn't work. It's also not, it's also like not refining your resume for each individual job you apply for. So be committed to doing an artist statement for each series. Now I know that seems daunting. It's really not. Once you have one done, you kind of have a template done that you yourself can follow. And in our download section, I have um, put my artist statement for one of my series so that you can just kind of take a look at it. We're going to take a look maybe at your, um, or we're going to ask you to maybe take a look at the sheets that you, or the notes you jot down about your artwork by series and just look for a couple of statements that that pop out every time so for me in the end that I felt series it was always about emotion well clearly I feel emotion so there you have the title of the series and then I felt and there was three dots at the end because each one was titled an emotion so then that led me to thinking about you know when I looked at the series worksheets okay these all came from particular moments and so that's, that's the basis of the statement. In, in certain moments in time, we have an emotion that intrinsically changes us. We have an experience that causes an emotion that changes us. That was the building block for um, my artist statement. You have those building blocks. You know about your purpose and your intent. So, for example, in, in the case of, and then I felt, I want people to feel their emotions. Like, emotions are a beautiful thing. But so often we're told to stuff them or let it go. I say work through it. So part of my purpose is that I can cause the change of maybe helping people to feel those emotions. So the statement is that in this moment, when we feel those emotions, we shine. I'm encouraging people. That's what I'm doing. Now, this seems all kind of convoluted, right? Because we're picking pieces from here and pieces from there. All we're really looking for is a couple of statements that you can make about your work and about the, the change you would like to have happen in the world. Once you have those couple of statements, you can form it into a paragraph or even two. Now, in today's day and age, we have this ideal of this lofty artist statement. You know, um, it's the, um, the challenges of the ephemeral abyss and how it, it challenges our philosophical state and being. I mean, I don't even know what that means. I really have no clue what that means. And if I have to think about it that long to know what it means, I'm probably not interested in it. 
This is one of, to me, the very big, huge disconnects. I pay a lot of attention to artist statements when I'm out looking at art because it really tells me something about the artist. Are they playing to an audience? Are they being true to their artwork? Do they know their artwork? These are the three basic things I find out. You know, these lofty statements that people make from an, on an artist statement are really playing to a certain group of people that expect that. But I don't know that it's actually true to the art, and I don't know that it's true to the person, because I guarantee you, every one that I've read like this, where I have met the artist, they don't sound like that. They don't sound like that at all. Here's, here's the tip. The artist statement should sound like you. It should look like your artwork. Here's the fear we're facing. We make art, something visual that is seen, and then we have words, and our words have to be proven in the art, and the art have to prove the words. And that is very scary. It's especially scary when you're trying to conform to a set standard that the art world at large has determined is right and accurate. I'm not playing their game. I'm the artist. I have the power. You're the artist. You have the power. They don't have to like your artist statement. Now, I understand there are some risks to that, but what are you really looking to do with your art business? Are you looking to make an impression or are you looking to engage with people? See, that's a big, huge defining line. Making an impression might be okay, but I don't know a single artist who has had a successful business doing that. But I do know that artists who are accessible have successful businesses and your artist statement is a number one way to make that happen. Here's something else interesting for you. I've been to a thousand shows and I pay attention and I could just kind of watch things because that's the analytical brain that I have. I just observe things and I put it together. There are three points in time where people will read an artist statement. Point number one is they walk in the door and that's the first thing they do because they want a deeper understanding and they want, a co they want context for what they're looking at. Place number two, halfway through or some variation of that. They've looked at some of the artwork, they go read the artist statement, they go look at the rest. They do this because they want to experience some of it, read the artist statement to see if it jives with them and if it resonates with them, and then they want to view the rest of it with that deeper understanding. See, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. They want to experience it on their own and then through the eyes of the artist. To me, that's a really interesting type of person. Typically, those are exactly the people who might go and actually talk to artists, believe it or not. Lastly, the last place they look at the artwork is at the very end. And they do that because they wanted the full-on experience. They go read the artist statement and maybe the bio, if there is one. And from there, they either leave or they go back through and look at it a second time. Now, when I say they leave, they may mingle before they leave because that's pretty much what these events are. But truly, if they go back and look at it a second time, those are also the people who may seek out the artist. It's important for you to be aware of these things. These are tells. You know, life is really just like a poker game. Everybody has a tell. And if you're observing the people who are at any of your openings or any of the events you have, you can gain an understanding of interest level or, you know, desire to know more. And you can use that benefit to be able to approach them. See, it's a lot easier for us to approach somebody who's at a show than it is for them to approach us. No, no joke. I know you're saying, but it's hard. It's hard going up and talking to people. Yeah, but you're the you're the artist. You're there on display already. They are not. So just really consider how that artist statement affects the flow of what you are doing. Also know that you can break it down to a pretty easy formula. I know, you're saying formula, but isn't that cookie cutter? No, because your words and your voice are not mine and they are nobody else's. But you can break it down to topic, what you've observed, and what you would like to see. Think about those three statements and form from all the information you've gathered. 
three or four lines and then put it together and put it in an order that flows. I will also tell you that paying a lot of attention to artist statements is something you should do. I'm not saying you have to read them all. This is how I advise you, you make that decision. If you love somebody's artwork, read the artist statement. I guarantee you it's either going to add or detract and it's important for you to understand how that works. Secondly, when I get the chance to read a lot of artist statements at once, I do tend to do that, especially in like, you know, group shows or um, there are some um, fairs that artist statements are available because you had to be juried in in order to, you know, get into the show. That's how I, I make the decisions, but I read a lot of them. I think just read the ones of the work you love or maybe also read the ones of the work you really dislike. You might be surprised what you learn and how it changes things and just knowing how the artist statement actually affects people is important. I hear very often, well, it's just something we have to have. No one really cares. No, they do, they do, they, they, honestly, they care. They really do care. They just care for very different reasons. And because of that, your approach, you kind of have to predetermine it. Are you writing for an audience or are you writing for the artwork? If you're writing for the artwork, it actually becomes pretty simple. So just keep all of that in mind and take one of your series and go write that artist statement. I encourage you um, to go ahead and send us an email. This is going to be one of the few times that we are going to encourage you to send us an email. And if they're really spectacular, if they're really good, we will absolutely, in one of our regularly produced videos, um, be going ahead and send and, and reading them and giving you a little bit of promotion. Why are we doing this? Because not everybody has the ability to see a lot of artist statements and it's going to be based on my opinion. That may or may not mean anything to you, but it gives you a point of agreeing or disagreeing to challenge yourself. So that's absolutely coming in a future video. Now, when we've had our fill, we're also going to revamp this video a little bit and make that stop because at some point that has to stop. Um, you know, it, it, it could become a problem. But until we do do that artist statement, dig, dig, until we do do that artist statement deep dive, we're going to leave the offer up there and we're going to take a look at them. We are actually going to read them. I will absolutely let you know if yours has been selected and make sure I get permission. But think about this. It's an occasion where you, an artist, can give back to other artists. This is one of our underlying themes here. We all should be helping each other out. We're all in this together. It's not an easy life doing that creative thing. So where we can and when we can, I think we should. Keep that in mind too moving forward.